This is 7 News. Tonight, dozens of sharks in a feeding frenzy off Yanchep. A wife's plea in the search for a missing Perth father. Nothing would keep him from me and the boys. Nothing. Gina Reinhardt's secrets made public. Details of what split Australia's richest family. And Ross Lyon one-on-one -on -one with Basil Zemplis, his message to Mark Harvey. From the studios of Seven Perth, Susanna Carr and Rick Arden. Good evening. We start tonight with rare pictures of sharks in a feeding frenzy just off the coast of Perth. Dozens of sharks were spotted this morning, forcing the closure of Yanship Beach. They were just a kilometre offshore. Jeff Parry reports. Not a rare event, but certainly rarely seen. Little fish chased by big fish being chased by bigger fish. It's the quick or the eaten amongst this lot. Here you can see small bait fish form what are called bait balls, a last ditch defensive effort against being eaten. Spearing in amongst them, tuna feed on the bait fish. The tuna have come in and, and concentrated the school of, of bait fish um, and the sharks at some stage have been attracted by all the commotion that's been, been going on and come in looking for a feed themselves. 50 or 60 of them, a mix of spinner sharks and black tip whalers. Easy pickings here. These species aren't particularly aggressive and they're um, uh, small enough that they wouldn't really pose a, a major risk to public safety. These sharks don't normally swim as a pack. It's the chance of an easy feed that's brought them together and they'll go back to hunting alone till the next time. With so many sharks, it's tempting to draw the conclusion that the number of sharks along our coast has increased. But Rory McCauley says that would be a mistake. These sharks have, have appeared here in reasonable quantities and that's an indication of, of the steps that have been taken to conserve shark populations off WA. Jeff Parry, Seven News. Now to details of two police investigations in Perth in the city's north and east. Grant Taylor is reporting from police headquarters on an attack on a young Perth woman. And David Cooper is in Wanneroo where a man has mysteriously disappeared. Well, let's start in Wanneroo. And David Cooper, police are searching for 30-year-old David Blenkinsop. So good evening, that's right. The father of two was last seen leaving his family home here on Table Drive in Wanneroo. That was eight days ago. David Blenkinsop and his wife Diana had friends over that evening. David kissed his wife goodnight, then walked one of the guests to her nearby home. It was quarter to two in the morning. David Blenkinsop hasn't been seen or heard of since. I know something's not right. He, he would, he'd never do this. He's never done it. Something's wrong. Someone must know something out there. Um, people don't just disappear. David Blenkinsop and his wife Diana are high school sweethearts. They have two boys together, two sons. One is almost three years old, the other just 18 months. The major crime squad has now taken over the investigation into what's happened to David Blenkinsop. Rick. Thanks, David. From Wanneroo, let's take you to police headquarters and details of an attack on a young woman. Grant Taylor, she was grabbed by a man while out jogging. Yes, Rick, the 20-year-old Canadian student was wearing headphones at the time and didn't hear the man run up from behind and grab her. Now, uh, she was jogging near the Canning River in Thornley about 6.40 last night. Police say she fought back as the man tried to drag her away, scratching him with her nails and then running to a nearby house for help. Now, her, att her attack is described as a short, olive-skinned male aged about 20 to 25. Police are urging anyone with information to call Crime Stoppers. They're also urging women to exercise caution when uh, wearing headphones while out exercising alone. So Thanks, Grant. Australia's richest person, Gina Reinhardt, has been forced to release secret documents detailing her feud with three of her children. Their squabble over billions of dollars involves bitter accusations and pleas to keep their differences private. Those who know Gina Reinhardt say she'd hate the public airing of her family's dirty laundry and that she may be left with no choice but to buy her children's silence. To some breaking news now, and an emergency is unfolding in North Fremantle. Blake Johnson is in the Seven News helicopter. And Blake, what can you tell us? Rick, we're right above an ocean, uh, sorry, a river rescue. I'll take you to some live pictures from the helicopter here. A man has fallen about six metres down a cliff. Now, it's actually a bit further north than, than North Fremantle. Uh, the rescue helicopter has arrived and is about to 
uh, winched the man from the bottom of the cliff. We understand he's got a broken leg. Not sure how he fell or what other conditions he's got. They couldn't reach him, though, so they've had to get the chopper down, winched uh, someone onto the ground, which you can see at the moment, and they're about to pull him up, and uh, hopefully he's OK. At this stage, all we know, though, is he has the broken leg. Back to you. Thanks, Blake. A husband accused of attempting to murder his estranged wife by stabbing her 25 times in her Karanup home says he didn't intend to kill her. Lawyers for Alexander Nicholas Petrellis admit their client attacked his wife when he was high on amphetamines. Six Perth drivers lost their licences today, caught in a police sting on hoons doing illegal burnouts. One of the drivers told Seven News his biggest regret is getting caught. A car club meeting in Nirabup five weeks ago. One stunt ended with the car slamming into bystanders. Oh! Police cracked down on the meeting spot. Today, at Joondalup Magistrates Court, six men had their driver's licence suspended and were fined. Some weren't keen to talk. Others, oh, piss off, mate. when given the chance, defended their actions. Go for gold. Just don't get caught. Reese Chard is 19. He was caught by police doing 360-degree burnouts. Today, suspended for six months and fined $600. Do you regret doing it or do you just regret getting caught? Some of it regret doing it, but most of it's great regretting getting caught, yeah. Father of five, Rodney Johnson, was suspended for a year. He was caught fishtailing, his second reckless driving charge. Was what was happening on that night dangerous? Oh, I wouldn't say it was dangerous. And this is the semi-industrial road where those burnouts and fishtails happened. You can tell by the rubber here, the place is no stranger to some pretty reckless driving. It's also seen tragedy as well. Four years ago, 15-year-old Hayley Morrison was killed on this road in a high-speed crash. Blake Johnson, 7 News. A 36-year-old man has been taken into custody after the discovery of his friend's body in the backyard of a Nolamara house. Major crime detectives and forensic officers were called to the unit just after nine last night. Police won't reveal how the 34-year-old man died. This is a very complex scene. There's quite a lot of um, exhibits that have been seized to date and we're working our way through those. Police haven't laid any charges. It's been another scorching day in Perth in our record-breaking heat wave. And, Natalia, there's finally some relief in sight. Yes, so it will come to an end tomorrow. The Bureau is predicting a cooler top of 31. Today was day four of the heat wave. The temperature hit 40.6. We've had eight heat waves since November, and that's a new record for Perth. It's also only the third time since records began that the city has had four days over 38 degrees in March. In other weather news, there's a cyclone developing off the Northern Territory. It could affect the far north of WA around Kununurra in the next couple of days. I'll have the details later in weather. Rick. Thanks, Natalia. If your job comes with a mobile phone, take care how you use it. It's been revealed bosses are entitled to keep copies of everything transmitted over company equipment. It means they can read texts and emails you thought were private from the river down here in North Fremantle. It took them about half an hour to secure him on the chopper. While they did that, the rescue chopper held back so that the downwash wasn't disrupting the, the, uh, the rescue operation. A couple of people on the ground, including water police, managed to get there, get on the stretch, get this man on the stretcher. He apparently had a broken leg after falling about six metres from the cliff. And as I said, just a couple of minutes ago, the rescue 6-5 chopper took off and took the man to hospital. No word yet on how or why he fell. He's off to hospital now. Thanks, Blake. And that's 7 News for this Monday. Thanks for your company. Now here's Monica with Today Tonight.